So for Tech Tips 50, I decided to bring back one of my favorite tech tips. This is something I still use in a lot of my music, and this is gonna be utilizing Ableton Live's auto pan effect, which uh, is more than just a panning effect. There's so much you can do with it because it's basically just a volume LFO, and if you know that, there are different ways that we can abuse it and use it for things like sidechain compression or gating effects or lots of different ways to add interesting volume movement to otherwise static or sustained sounds. So let's get into it. All right, so for this tech tip, we wanna take a look at what I believe is one of the unsung heroes in Ableton Live's arsenal, which is the auto pan effect. Now here, I've got just a small groove set up. We got some drums and then this pad sound. I'll play it all together so you can hear what we're working with. And currently, I've taken the auto pan, which can be found under the audio effects category in the browser. Here it is, auto pan. I've taken that and I'm just using it in its standard run of the mill kind of intended way to use it. So if I solo the pad, you can hear if you're listening in headphones or you're sitting in front of a good pair of studio monitors, you can probably hear this kind of fast panning effect, quick little left-right movement, and that's what auto pan is intended to do. Now, the way it does that, though, is if you look carefully at the interface here, it's using two separate volume LFOs, or low-frequency oscillators, and basically we have one that's dedicated to modulating the volume in the left speaker, or the left channel, and then another one that's dedicated to modulating the volume in the right side or the right channel. So you can see those indicated by the L is kind of this blue, that's represented by the blue sine wave here. The R is this kind of yellow orange color represented by this yellow LFO sine wave here. So basically it's kind of tricking your ears into hearing panning and it's not really panning, it's not taking the pan pot and moving it left and right, it's just kind of adjusting the volumes of each channel independently. So we hear when one volume goes down, the other goes up. So we're kind of simulating this panning effect. Now, if you know that, if you know that at its core, auto pan is just an LFO that's modulating volume, then you can start to open up its possibilities and, and kind of abuse it a little bit and use it for more unintended purposes, which I intend to show you right now. So down here in the auto pan, you can see we've got this phase control. And in the default setting, that's gonna be set to 180 degrees. What that means is the phase relationship between the left and right channel. So at 180 degrees out of phase, you can see that when one LFO moves up, the other one moves down, giving us this panning effect. Let me turn the amount all the way up just so we can really hear that. However, if we take the phase all the way down to either zero degrees or all the way up to 360 degrees, you can see that the phases of the two LFOs align. Now we're just modulating volume. So now I'm getting more of like a tremolo sort of effect. Okay, so let's reset that to 180. I actually wanna keep this auto pan in place here. I wanna keep this sort of panning effect going on, but let's take a different instance of auto pan. And what I'm gonna do instead is make a few changes to it. So let's turn the amount up just so we can see the LFO. You can see that as I turn that up, we're increasing basically the depth of how much this LFO is affecting the volumes. We're gonna take the phase all the way down to zero, just so the two are aligned. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sync this LFO to the tempo of my track here. So I can do that by clicking this button down here that looks like a little note. And now you can see that the rate dial changes. Over here, the rate is showing me hertz or cycles per second. Here, I see the rate showing me note divisions or beat divisions. So let's do something like, um, maybe we'll go to eighth notes. And then what I'm gonna do is down here in the right corner, change the LFO shape. We can change the LFO shape from here. So it starts as a sine wave, but let's do this. We're gonna change it to this sort of downward ramping saw. Now, if we listen to this, instead of just hearing a sustained pad sound, we're gonna be hearing this kind of cut up fast volume modulation going on. So take a listen to this. Let me just turn off the first auto pan so we can really focus on this one. So similar to a gating effect, any trance fans in the house here might have, might recognize uh, trance gating on pad sounds, very similar effect. Or if you DJ with things like Tractor, Serato, if you ever used gating effects when DJing, it's gonna start to sound similar. So down here, the shape control, this allows us to take the selected LFO shape and kind of bend it in different ways. So if I turn this up, you can see that this saw wave, it's kind of curving it. 
to a point where if I turn it high enough, it almost turns it into a square wave. So I can kind of adjust the feel or the shape of that gating effect. Let's maybe try setting it to 16th notes so we get a little faster. Let's hear it with our groove. So we've added an interesting rhythm where there wasn't really much rhythm before on just sort of a blase sustained sound. Now if we start to pile auto pans up, so we got this one doing the panning thing, we got this one doing the gating thing. We start to add a lot of different sounding movement to this. Let's do something a little bit different with this auto pan because one of my one of the big things that I really like to do with auto pan is to fake sidechain compression. And if you're a veteran of Ableton Live, if you've been using it uh, prior to version 10.1, where they finally added the ability to freeze tracks with sidechain compressors on them, if you've been using Ableton Live longer than that, you've probably run into this issue where you can't freeze a track that has a sidechain compressor on it. However, if a track has an auto pan on it and we're faking sidechain compression, we can freeze it no problem, regardless of the version of Live that we're using. So um, let's keep this auto pan on with the 16th note gating thing. I kind of like that. We may bring that back into play, but let's grab another auto pan. And what I'm going to do here is make a couple of quick changes. So just follow along with me, sort of reviewing what we did over here. We're going to change it to sync mode. I'm going to change the rate now to quarter notes. Let's turn the amount all the way up for now so we can see and then fully hear what we're doing. We'll bring the phase all the way down. We're going to change the saw, uh, change the LFO to a saw wave. And then what I'm going to do here, because it's just giving me this downward facing saw wave, we're going to hit this button that says normal. That's going to invert the waveform, basically invert its phase. So now it's ramping upward instead of ramping downward. So now if we listen to this, kind of giving us this ducking effect similar to what you might get with a, um, with a sidechain compressor with a four on the floor kick drum. Let me do this because I just realized I have this send going to a reverb, which is not getting the effect of the auto pan. Let me just turn the send level down. Now we can hear that a lot more clearly. Let's hear it with the drums. If we adjust the shape, we can kind of adjust the feel of that ducking. Let's maybe turn the volume up a little bit more so we can hear it a bit clearer over the mix. So we can hear this ducking happening, but if you listen carefully, you can hear a little bit of a click happening, and that's because the volume's kind of ramping up smoothly, and then it drops really abruptly on every quarter note. So this is, you know, in some cases passable. If you don't really notice it in the mix with a bunch of things going on, it's not really that big of a deal. However, if it's really bothering you, there is a workaround to this. What we can do is we're going to change the LFO shape to a sine wave. That's just going to give us a smoother all-around curve. I'm going to bring the shape control all the way down just so we have a pure sine wave here. I'm going to turn the invert function off so we're back to normal. And then I'm going to set the offset somewhere around 100, 110. And you can kind of play around with this to kind of play with the groove of the ducking effect. Let's hear it with the drums. Now we've got a nice smooth sidechain compression effect with no clicking. It's kind of grooving along to the kick. And if you adjust the offset just by a couple degrees up or down, you can kind of play around with the swing of how the ducking is occurring with the auto pan. I think 110 was sounding good though. I'm gonna leave it there. Let's add this one back on. So now we can start to pile up auto pans and get way more interesting movement happening in sustained sound. So the auto pan, again, the unsung hero of the Ableton Live audio effect world. Use it for sidechain compression, use it for gating effects, or just use it for good old fashioned panning. Catch you guys in the next video. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.